beautiful God, loving God, forgiving God, second chance God, third chance God, fourth chance God. We bless you this morning, Lord. In the worship of your people, Lord, we pray that has been a sweet-smelling aroma to you, Lord God. We know that this is what's going to happen in heaven. 24-7 is worship of you. God, we love you so much. But from hearts that have been touched, from lives that you have worked in, we say this morning, we owe you everything.
whatever advice that that may be, in the name of Jesus, we pray that the chains be broken, the bondage be broken, and they be set free. Lord, whether it be a financial need, Lord, we know that we're in the palm of God in your hands, and you're always looking after us. And your word says, the righteous will never go hungry. Because you own all the cattle on the hills. The wealth of this world is yours. And Father, touch that need. Those that need a better job, we pray that you open the windows and the doors of opportunity. Those that need a, a bigger house, Lord, I pray that you would again open the windows and the doors of opportunity. Father, I pray for everybody that's here spiritually, Lord God. As we talk about in Sunday school, the Holy Spirit was the gift that was given for the church and those that believe and follow you. Holy Spirit, follow every individual that is here. Renew their resolve for you. Renew their commitment to you. Lord, let our service be empowered by your Holy Spirit so that we can do good things for you. So that we can do the work that you have called us to do. I lift up our family, friends, and loved ones that need Jesus in their lives. We ask in the name of Jesus, your Holy Spirit, help us to bring the good news to them. Lord, I pray for whoever is watching us online, not able to be here this morning, reach out to where they're at, bless them, and minister to them. Remember our assistant pastor, Mitzi, Sister Tosia, as they minister in our start this morning, let your Holy Spirit anoint them. Bless the church in Oxford. Father, we pray for those that are traveling. For Laura and Will and David, as they travel to visit college that he's considering to attend. Father, we pray and travel in mercy. Help him to decide what you have in store for him. We lift up our children that are not in our homes, that are attending school and other activities. We pray for Saya, Noah, Rico, Malena, Lord, wherever they are, whatever game that they're playing, I pray that you protect them from any injuries. Help them to finish their education, to finish what they call you have called them to do, and bless them, Lord God. We lift up our family members that are in the. I pray your blessing upon those that are preaching your word, your true word. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us enough to give your life for us. So that we may be forgiven. So that we may enjoy time with you. We will not suffer judgment. But we live in freedom and blessing. Because Jesus, you died for us. And we thank you this morning. Forgive us of our sins, shortcomings towards you, Lord God. And as you forgive us, Lord. Father, I pray, help us to forgive one another for the things that we may do may cause someone, Lord, to want to stumble, to want to give up. Lord, help us to do that. And we love you, and we're thankful, and we give glory, praise, and honor in Jesus' wonderful name. All the church say amen. amen. Thank you guys. God loves you.
praise the Lord. Turn to your neighbor and say, praise the Lord. All of you, turn to your other neighbor and say, praise the Lord. 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 How many of you enjoy coming to church? Yeah. I don't even hear this side. These guys are. Do we all enjoy coming to church? Yeah. Let's all say amen real loud. Yeah. All right, now you woke up some of those that were sleeping. And I'm not going to ask how many of you sleep in church. We're going to leave that. To the Lord, amen. But I don't want to try to get a lot of you. I'm to to my mom, which is not a tool. I'm going to be supporting this year's last year's to be a little bit out. I don't see any new faces. And this is your second time, well, you're already a member. You just don't know it yet. You'll get your confirmation in the mail, amen. Well, we love to have visitors here with us. We are thankful and uh, joyful that you're able to worship with us together. And we just ask that if you need a church, a home church, this church is available. And uh, it will always be available until every chair is filled. Say amen. <laughs> You say, well, there ain't that many more chairs available. Oh, well, that song that says, there's always room at the cross. That's how we feel. There's always room at the cross. Amen. Uh, so, uh, I write down before our offering. We're gonna, this is the first Sunday. We want to start something that we used to do, right? But we kind of like, uh, uh, so we support missionaries all over the world. We may not be able to go to that part of the world, but we support them so that they can go. Say amen. So this morning, we want to give this opportunity to our missions department. And the representative is going to come and share uh, something about mission. I'm not sure they're going to share a particular mission, but they're going to come and share, and just so that we remember to pray for our missionaries. And sometimes we're, we have so many things to pray for, we forget to pray for our mission. So before our offering, we're going to call up Sister uh, Easter. Oh, sorry. Guga, Pastor Guga. She's going to come and share uh, a mission uh, story, a missionary.
that God will open the hearts of the people in the country that she's at so that they will be receptive to the good news. And um, in her times of sickness or loneliness, just pray for God's healing for her. So her name is Elvina. You can write it down because when you walk out of the door, you're going to forget. Her name is Elvina Tubuono. Elvina Tubuono. So just be looking um, throughout this month. We're going to be posting some information up on her. But just pray. Pray for her. She's a single, young, young woman who was bold enough to say yes that she would go to the mission field. So we want her to know that we here at Vista, Oceanside Assembly of God, are praying for her. Amen? So um, with that being said, I'll go ahead and turn it over to uh, Pastor Kate. But before that, I'd like the missions team to stand where you're at so everybody can see that I'm not a long way to
Oh 
so that we may have it all. We thank you in your precious name, Jesus. Amen.
this great. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for this song that we just heard. For you are the only way, Father God, to heaven. We thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice. And Lord, I just uh, pray as I prepare to give an encouragement to the church, Father God, that uh, you just open our hearts, open our minds to receive what you would have us to hear this morning, Father. We love you and praise you. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. It's been a while um, just standing here in this, uh, in this new setting. It's, uh, it's just awesome. An awesome feeling to see where God has brought us from. Uh, just the things that He's doing in our church and our church lives. And, and we're here. And uh, glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Uh, something that God has put in uh, my heart this morning just to encourage us. Um, the message that I uh, want to encourage you with is titled Holy Living. Holy, Holy Living. It's kind of holy Living. So, what does it mean to be holy? Holy means to be set apart or separate from sin and evil. Why is it uh, so important that we have to be holy? A lot of people, when they uh, when they think of themselves, they don't really think of themselves as holy. Uh, we just uh, when we accept Christ, we we uh, live our life uh, to the best that we can, what God's word says. But we don't really don't think of it as being holy or holiness. But in actuality, holiness is because we're separate from sin and evil, we're set apart. Holiness is what uh, we are to do, uh, we are to be every day as Christians. We are to be holy. And how do we become holy? Holiness is uh, obedience to God's word. We can't be a holy people if we're not obedient to what God says in his word. The God that we serve is a holy God. And because He is holy, and He has called us to be holy. We see that in the book of uh, Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 2. God is uh, telling Moses, He says, Speak to the entire assembly of Israel and say to them, Be holy, because I, the Lord your God, am holy. Amen? Amen. So, In, uh, in the book of Le Leviticus, when, uh, when God had uh, called the people out of Israel, uh, they were in bondage, they were a uh, slave uh, in Egypt, and God called them out of their, their bondage, God called them out of their slavery. He took them into the desert, and he wanted to, to be a God uh, to the people. And he charged them, he said, because I am holy, you be holy. And being holy to the uh, the Israelites was to God was going to give them some uh, a law that they would uh, abide in, that they would uh, obey. And it's in obedience to the laws that uh, God has given them, they were going to be uh, holy. They were made holy through the laws that God had given them. And we know the people of Israel; they were. Uh, very disobedient uh, uh, people. <coughs> kind of like how we uh, in the present are now. We're, sometimes we're really disobedient. We want to do the things that God's telling us to do, but for some reason it's hard because our flesh our flesh wants to do the things that, uh, that the flesh desires, right? So God's calling God's telling the people, he's giving them the laws, and he's saying, obey these laws. When you, in obedience to these laws, you are being made holy. So God gave the laws a bridge to connecting the people of Israel with him. The obedience to the law is what made Israel holy. We know that they couldn't, uh, they weren't perfect people. 
there is disobedience, uh, they, there is always sin, there is always a problem with the Israelites, uh, with the things that God wanted, wanted them to do. It was a sin that, uh, that held them bondage, uh, that kept them from fully doing what God's laws were made for them to do. So we come into the New Testament, and we come to this person, Jesus. Jesus came and provided a perfect sacrifice for our sins. Amen? Amen? In the days of Moses, they had to sacrifice animals, and every year, that sacrifice was, to be, was supposed to be an atonement for the people of Israel for their sins. And that sacrifice, even though it was what the priests offered, but it wasn't really, um, it wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough sacrifice. It wasn't the perfect sacrifice. And so Jesus came and provided that perfect sacrifice for us. And it's something that we do at every uh, communion. We remember. Amen. We just took communion and remember. We remember the sacrifice that Christ made to us, the perfect sacrifice. And because he fulfilled the law and became the only way to fellowship with God, now obedience to Christ is what makes us holy. Obedience to the commandments back in the uh, the time of the Israelites, it was what made them holy, but now Christ has come. Jesus has come. And our obedience, our, our obedience to Christ is what makes us holy. The main verse that I want to speak uh, for my message this morning is found in the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 16. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 16. And I'll go ahead and read it. It says, Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you. When Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming, as obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, Be holy, because I am holy. Uh, a lot of times I, I wonder to myself, am I living a holy life? Is, uh, is what I do every day, am I living holy? Is it something that's pleasing God? Am I obeying what God's word is telling me to do? You see, obedience is key in being holy. Obedience to the word of God. Is, is key in being holy. So what are some things that uh, we should what are some things that uh, we should do to uh, get us to that place of holiness? Number one is sacrifice. We need to sacrifice. Galatians 2.20 says I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Christ was the ultimate sacrifice. He sacrificed his life so that we would have this freedom in Christ. So if God had, if God had sacrificed his life, we have been crucified with Christ. We no longer live. A lot of the things that we want to do, or our sinful nature wants to do, we should no longer want to do it. Because we have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer us living, but it is Christ that's living in me. So the life that I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 5, 24, 25 says, So those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh. When we came to Christ, when we accepted Him as Lord and Savior, we wanted to change. 
We wanted to change from our old sinful nature. We wanted to change from the things that we used to do. The sin that uh, trapped us. We wanted to get away from it. We wanted to make a change. And it was only through Jesus that we could do this. So we who belong to Christ Jesus, we need to crucify the flesh. We need to live by the Spirit. Keep in step with the Spirit. How do we live by the Spirit? We live by honoring God. We live by obey, obedience to what the Word of God says. We allow the Spirit to be our guide, to be uh, the captain of our ship. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> sacrifice. When we sacrifice the worldly things that used to entrap us, we can live a holy life. Can you say amen? amen. Number two, separation. By the way, these are all S's. The first one is sacrifice. The second one is separation. Romans 12, 1 to 2 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. In order to achieve holiness, we need to be separated. There needs to be a separation from ourselves and from the world. We do not need to be conformed to the patterns of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Separation from the things of this world brings holiness in our lives. What are we separating from? The things are not, that are not pleasing to God. You know, a lot of times, uh, we as Christians, we want to do the right thing, but there's some things that we think, well, uh, it might be okay. You know, and we compromise what God's word says, what our desires are, what we think is right. But God is telling us we need to be separated. Separate from the world. Separate your thoughts from the thoughts of the world. You know, uh, this world offers a lot of um, compromise. Uh, a lot of things that the world is showing now. I think the Satan is out in the open right now. You know, you see it in all of the things that are Music, the music industry and the, the actors, uh, it, he's not hiding anymore. Yeah. And he wants to trap as many people as he can because he knows that Jesus is coming soon. Yeah. You know, he wants to compromise our holiness, yeah. compromise our obedience to what Christ is telling us to do. And so everything is flashed when you look on social media. You see everything that is opposite of what Christ is has taught us to do in his word. And these things, the more we see it, the more we listen to it, the more uh, we talk like them, the more we act like them because they're trying to tell us, hey, you know, this is how you should live your life. We're compromising God's word. Romans 12 one says we need to be separate. First Peter 2 verse 9 says, but you are a chosen people. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. You and me, you and I, we are a chosen people. We're God's special possession. We need to be separate from the world. The third is, is a spirit. We need the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives to be holy. 
Galatians 5, 16, 17 says, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. In order to live a holy life, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. We can't do it on our own. Our flesh desires what is opposite of what the Spirit wants us to do. The fourth is salvation. Hebrews 12, 14 says, Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. What does that mean to you? If I'm in disobedience with God's word, if I'm not trying to live my life holy and pleasing unto the Lord, will I see the Lord? We have to make every effort, even more so today, to have the Spirit lead and guide us in our walk in Christ. There are some here who might not have Christ as Lord and Savior in their life. And you want the power of God's Spirit to move in you, to help you to do the things that you don't want to do, but that you need to do, that would help you to obey His Word. We need to have that power of Jesus in our life. We need to accept Him as Lord and Savior in our lives. We need to make every effort that everything that we do as Christians, everything that we do, is holy and pleasing to God. We are a holy people, we're chosen. God has set us apart, set us apart for his work and for his kingdom. So if you're that person that needs, that wants that Holy Spirit, that wants that holiness for your life, this would be a good time to Accept Christ as Lord and Savior. Have Him to be that one to lead and guide you, to help you in this race for all, in this race together. Amen. My encouragement to you, church, this morning not only uh, our church people here are family, but our friends as well, those who are here. Holiness is something that we should desire every day of our lives, but when we wake up in the morning, it's holiness. It's living our lives right for Christ. When we go to bed, it's holiness. Holiness should be something that we desire because we serve a God who is holy and because he has called us to holiness as well. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. I pray, Father, that fall upon good soil, that we would be able to be a people who are separate from sin, from ungodliness, that we would sacrifice, Lord, our fleshly desires, and that we would have you as Lord and Savior in our lives to live this race that we're running. So we thank you, Lord, for your word, and that you bless it in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's turn it over to Pastor.
one of the most important for Christians is holiness. Holiness, sanctification, living right for God is a separation from the rest of the world. From the rest of the world. You can't keep coming to church on Sunday and expect to be holy Monday back to the world and do the things that God separated you from. There has to be a sweetener. Separation between what was and what is to be. There's that song that we see sometimes, holiness, holiness, what you want for me, what you want for me. My father said, you need, you need to be able to talk about the time of all time. Separation does not happen. Separation does not happen because we pray for it. And you say I want to be separated, separated from the old life. Separation happened when you decide, Lord, I'm going to live holy today. Today, Lord, I'm going to change. Today, Lord, I'm going to be separated from the old life. Then Paul says, when I became a Christian, everything becomes new. Your walk becomes new. Your talk becomes new. Your mind becomes new. Your relationship are renewed. Your mind is changed by the power of God's word. Like what the speaker said, obedience is the key. But we have to have sacrifice. And we have to separate ourselves. And we have to Embrace the Holy Spirit. And we have to be thankful for your salvation. Those are the things. If you want to live a victorious life, you have to live holy. Say amen. amen. Living holy doesn't mean you're going to have, you're going to be happy every day. There's some battles to fight to live holy. The Angi Tawe and we are in the land of Papua you're driving on the road and somebody cuts you off, you just run out. Not high five them. Right? And they just make you upset that you're going into this road rage and, and you find yourself. I say that because I, I often struggle with that too. Somebody cuts me off. And, but holiness requires that. I'm separated from that kind of mindset. Holiness means I'm not going to be angry where my actions will become violent and can't control. Holiness controls. Control. Control. Control your mind. Control what you do. Control what you look at. Living for God requires total God control. Say that. Ask me to it. The word is simple, it's clear. You can't get it twisted. Holiness is required. But the question for you this morning: How's your holy living? Because I think that's what the preacher was preaching this morning. Ola fa'al fa'iyayina. But my pentero mufasa amor. Le'ufu le'fa'ala uga. A 
it is written. You be holy. Because I am holy. Amen. Can't stand before a holy God with unholiness that you live. And finally, to me, Lumos here, to a Bahia, is your Langa, Le Bahia. Oh, to for poor the poor, your Langa, this. Oh, to for poor the poor, Langa, to not a lady for Langa, and I hold the Langa to me, your Langa to buy. Oh, boy, there were very few Shiano, boy, there were very many Kalisia, yes, you can so. Who are to see her? Your Bahia, oh, to a wife, Bahia, Lama. Or se perceive it to perceive that the oil at the way. Perceive the oil at the hour. Opa ear, ear, opa ear, ear, no more. Don't settle for it. Oh, it's, it's, it's going good. Don't settle for it. It's, it's all right. No. Mediocrity in the Christian life. Is the enemy of holy living. Olo fa pe ai ko ko le ai ko ke ko le ai ko ai ka lo kusi ko le ai ko ka ka lo ya sumba ko le ai le ke le ke le ya wasala ko le ai ya wasala. Holy living requires God in control. God in control. My mind, God is in control. My heart, God is in control. My mouth, God is in control. We shared in Sunday school this morning when the Holy Spirit came. Holy Spirit, if you embrace it, equals holy living. And we shared and we said the first thing that the Holy Spirit changed was their talk. How do we talk? By your ear? How do we speak? By our mouths. I like what the prophet Isaiah said, and then the Lord came with the burning hot coal, and he touched my mouth. Because Isaiah said, I'm a man with a dirty mouth. You might say, Wahuwari Tagata, a mutu leanga, faitala le maluia, faitala leanga, ah, yeah. Maybe it's not your words, maybe it's your mind. Let the word of God saturate your mind. So when the devil brings something, oh devil, you're such a liar. Yeah. Right then? When we look at somebody that's uh, beautiful, God's creation, then we sometimes have unholy thoughts. But we say, Lord, saturate my mind. Let everything I think about holiness, holiness, holiness. Such an important word. We're going to sing a song. But I want you to take a real deep look within your own personal life and walk with God and see just how close you are walking with Him. Because I want to tell you, the closer you walk with God, the holier you become. The closer you walk with God, the more light is shed upon the things in your life that are not conducive to holy living. That doesn't go together with holy living. We're going to sing that song once or twice. We just want to say, Lord, I'm being transparent before you. And this is where I'm living. But I know this is where I need to be. Be my prayer. And don't look to the left or to the right and say, oh, no, just look to the Lord. All of us need to live holier, more for the Lord. You need prayer this morning. I want to invite you to come.
them, ask you to raise your right hand and let's pray together and ask God to make us holy for you. Can we do that together? Let's raise our hand, all of us, and I want to pray for all of us this morning. Father, we come to you humbly in your presence to ask to strengthen your Holy Spirit to do a work in our, our lives, each and every one of us that are here. Lord, so that we may live holy for you. Totally holy for you. There will be times when we fall short, but we know we need to get back to that holiness that you made us to be. Lord, I pray for everyone underneath the sound of my voice today. Even those of that might be watching through the internet this morning, help us, Lord, to desire to live holy for you, pleasing lives for you. Help us overcome all our weaknesses. Help us, Lord, to stand firm, to be steady. Lord, help us to always be ready as if you were to come today, Lord, ready for your return. Thank you for that encouraging word. Thank you for reminding us holiness is what you desire from us. So Lord, I pray that for all of us here today. Help us to live that life that you lead for us to. And Lord, this morning I pray a blessing upon your people. As we go, Father, go with us. Let your face shine upon us. Let us go with the peace that you give. And Lord, bless those that might be visiting today. Bless our church family. Bless those that are not able to be here today. Bless those that are watching through the internet this morning. We love you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. In your precious name. And all the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Take a seat for a minute as we do our announcements.